morning church this is a brand new song it's called again and again i think you will like it church our god is good let's praise him today
Welcome to Compassion. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Julie, and I just want to take a few moments to welcome you. How many of you are excited to be here today? So exciting, Life Change Sunday. We're so excited that you're here. In your seat, when you came in, you saw a program, and you also saw a a Connect card. And if it's your first time here, or if you've been here forever, can can you wave that at me? I see some of you already doing that, okay? You might have to get it out. Okay, I see it. There's a pen right in front of you, and if you'll go ahead and start filling it out. If it's your first Sunday, we would love for you to fill this out in a moment right after this. We're going to sing another song, and and the offering buckets will go by, and you can place it in there. It's just a great way for us to stay connected. And on the back, there's a section that says prayer request, and I would love for you to fill that out. Anything that you're going through as a family, I would love for you to fill this out because as a team, we, we pray over these prayer requests every single week. We've seen God answer prayer and we believe we're better and stronger together through prayer and so we'll give you a few moments right now to go ahead and start filling that out every week we have a time where we worship god through our giving and if it's your first time here you don't even have to listen to this part don't look at this screen screen because we are not asking you to give but those of us who are here we come prepared to give because we help people find and follow jesus through your generosity every week here are three ways that you can give Maybe you're thinking, I'd love to join a team. I'd love to go beyond this Sunday morning experience. We invite you to First Step. It's out in the patio. We are expanding in Compassion Kids. It's it's so exciting. We're going to be using the upstairs as well. And so that means we need more team. We need more team on First Impressions. My teenager, Evan, he actually serves on First Impressions team. So I know if Evan can serve, anyone can serve. So we invite you to join the team. Next week is Mom Fest. We're excited about Mother's Day, and we won't just be celebrating all the moms. That's right, and you can celebrate that. Every woman that's here is gonna be celebrated, and so we invite you to come back next week. And today is Life Change Sunday. How many of you are excited about baptisms, right? We're excited about that. What's so awesome is to hear the stories. In our first service, we had um, a, a man who his sister, Robin has been praying for him for 40 years to be saved and baptized, and he was baptized at the nine. And so every story is so important. You know, yesterday I was actually in the grocery store, and I saw a friend, her, her boys go to our school, and we started talking about church. Somehow it just comes up with me, I guess. But she was talking about what she values in a church, and, you know, we were agreeing that, number one, the first thing should be a pastor who teaches God's word, right? God's word is the foundation of a good church, and I believe we have that. We have a pastor who teaches from humility, and I know, I know he's my husband, and I'm biased, but I think he does a pretty awesome job at that. But the second thing is a community that's authentic. And Mary and I grew up in a church that was awesome. We loved the people, but it wasn't really authentic. You know, you just showed up on a Sunday, and You were asked, hey, how are you? And you just say, fine, you know? And really, we weren't fine. In fact, I had a lot of trauma in my my life as a child that I never really talked about um, until I got here. 
This is why compassion is so special to me because we knew we wanted a culture that was different and we knew it had to start from us. And so this morning I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable with you. And if that scares you, I'm sorry, but um, I need a breakthrough in my life. How many of you need a breakthrough in your life? June 2020, uh, we had a trial that came into our life and we're still in. And it's in June will be two years. Two years is very hard to keep going, to keep going when you really want it to be over. And I have so many people here today, I know your story and you need a breakthrough too. A lot of times breakthroughs don't happen overnight, do they? And this next song, some of the lyrics that are really special to me every time we see them, sing them, it says, you alone can take my scars, piece by piece, restore my heart, take what's broken and make it whole again. Every Christmas, my dad and my mom come visit and I always buy a really big puzzle and they like to put, well, my dad and my, my son Pearson really spend the most time on it. But a lot of times I buy like the big one, the thousand piece. Anybody else like puzzles in here? Um, I, I don't know, they take forever for me, but it's kind of like a trial. It takes forever, right? But piece by piece, they're there the whole two weeks. They're taking the pieces and they're making something really beautiful. And in the end, we usually frame it. We have several that are in my son's room and it just reminds me of trials that we have in our life and piece by piece. That's why we have a community here because we wanna help you put the pieces back in because it takes a long time. But we all know that breakthrough, God can give us healing in that. And so right now, I don't know what your breakthrough ne it needs to be or what stronghold you have in your life, but I know that where two or three are gathered in his name, that he's here and I know he's here with us. And right now we're gonna take a few moments and pray. So that's right, we can, we can celebrate that, right? So if you'll stand with me, we're gonna just pray. You can go ahead and stand and um, I don't know what your breakthrough needs to be around. Maybe you have some family issues, they're hard. Maybe you're a student here and school's hard, you have anxiety. Um, in your friend group, it's hard. Maybe you have mental health issues, depression, finances, divorce, abuse. <laughs> Just look around and see so many of your stories, and I know you need breakthrough too. And if you need breakthrough today, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand, I need it. And so I'm raising my hand first, and if you need it, we're gonna pray. And I see some of you raising your hands. If, if someone's beside you, they have their hand raised, will you just put your hand on them and just, we're gonna just pray. We're gonna pray for breakthrough. Dear God, in this moment, I see so many of my friends because we're a family here, God, that needs breakthrough. And God, you've promised that it won't be easy, but you'll be with us every step of the way. And piece by piece, we're just begging you to give us the strength that we need to get through. God, I need breakthrough in my life. I know my friends here need breakthrough. And God, would you do that? Would you give us the strength that we need to get through these hard times? I believe in this room, there will be breakthrough. In your name I pray, amen.
you can do it, church. Come on, sing this. By your power, the ocean's open. Your fire falls down. Heaven and earth collide. King Jesus, forever by my side. Shake the mountain. in front of us, no matter what we're facing, no matter what life throws at us, God, you're our breakthrough. You're the only way we can have breakthrough. And so God, as we celebrate people finding Jesus and publicly declaring that with Baptism Sunday today, God, let us not forget you're the God of breakthroughs. Piece by piece, you can restore what's broken. And God, we're all broken. That's one area we can all relate. We've all been hurt. We've all suffered. We've all felt pain but you saved us with your son. He took the cross upon himself in our place. And God, that was the ultimate breakthrough. You've made a way for us to get to you, to get to heaven. And it's through your son, Jesus. So thank you for breakthrough. We pray it all in his name today. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. So I want to start off with a question, and I I want everybody just to go ahead and just be real for a moment and answer the question honestly. Go ahead and take your church face off for a minute, right? I want to ask you, I I think I know the answer, but how many of you out there have ever done something that has made you feel dirty on the inside? You did it, and then you felt dirty. Raise your hand along with me, and thank you so much. Now I don't feel like such a bad sinner myself. And I'm not the only one, at least. Man, by the way, look at everybody here. Isn't it great to be here and to be able to worship together today? I'm, uh, I'm excited about breakthroughs happening today. How many of you were glad to sing about a breakthrough and experience a breakthrough in this place today? Now, uh, some of you said, yes, I, uh, I have done something and I felt dirty. I can totally identify with you. I... I've done my share of things like you that just made me think, wow, that's awful. I feel bad about that. And uh, we feel shame and guilt, and it, it's like a dirty feeling, and that's no good. I, uh, I think it comes, maybe you did something that no one knows about. It's a, it's a 
dirty little secret, right? Maybe it's uh, some habit that you can't kick, some addiction. It could be debt that you're dealing with, and you're like, oh, I'm, I've got this debt, and I feel dirty because I've indulged, and I've gone into debt. I don't know what it could be. It could be lust. It could be some lie that you've told, and you haven't uh, really gone and been truthful with someone, and you feel, until you uh, open up and talk to them, you still feel dirty inside, and being dirty is no good, right? Let's just go ahead and say that carrying that debt, that dirt inside of us of guilt and shame is no good. And like it says on the screen, there's a better way. And today we're in week two of a better way. Week one, we said a key component, a key component of a better way life is through commitment. And we said Jesus taught us last week about being committed to his cause, to his church, to the cause of Christ. And I'm seeing some people that took that to heart because you're back this week and you have uh, stepped up your commitment already. And I just praise God for you. And I want to encourage everybody, if you're looking for life in a better way, step up your commitment level to Jesus Christ. Level up in your commitment to Jesus Christ and his church. And today, the key component of a better way of living is clean. Just a simple word, but it is a powerful word, clean. Because when we do those things that make us feel dirty, what do we do to wash that away? You know, I'm glad today we're not just kind of like going through the motions here at Compassion Church. We're not here just for some loud music, though I love it loud. We're not here just so that we can have some type of show or get some warm, fuzzy feeling. We are here today because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died on the cross so that our dirty sins can be washed clean. And can we praise God together for our Savior, Jesus Christ? Yes. Guys, I, uh, I'm a little bit loud, and I might shout here in a little bit, and I don't want to make these people deaf, so maybe you can back, back me off just a little bit. I'm getting a little excited, man. I can't help it. I'm, I feel like being loud. We just saw so many people get baptized. I don't know how many, and we've got a bunch more. If you're excited about seeing life change happen right here, can we praise God? Thank you. I went swimming in sewer water one time. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it. I feel dirty for even saying it. I was really dirty that night. It was bad. I went swimming in sewer water, uh, not on purpose really, and it was mixed with flood water. So me and some friends, we were at our church in North Carolina, and there was a flood from a hurricane. We used to have hurricanes all the time, and we were sandbagging our church trying to keep the flood waters out. And it flooded the parking lot, and it flooded the yard of the church, and there was this big ditch out by the road, and it was deep, and it was filled with water, and there was this brick wall in just the right spot to do some dives and flips off of that, and I said, hey, y'all, watch this, <laughs> and, and you guys know that's, that's a redneck's famous last words right there, right? But I did. I couldn't help it. it but the water, that wasn't the flood water that was the problem. It had gone into the sewer system, and, it, and I didn't really know all of the, all how bad it was till after the fact, but it was mixed in sewer water. The pump station had been overflowed and mixed in with the flood water, and here I am jumping off of a wall into the, into the nasty, junky sewer water, and the guys are cheering me on, and it's fun. We had a blast, but I've found out I, I felt so dirty you ever been so dirty you're like oh I got I can't wait to get a shower I mean it was so bad I got hepatitis Z I think it was nasty water and I had to go get some shot I did really they said you got to go and all you guys that were out there even working in it you got to get shots and so uh, I, I did I I went home I got a shower and I I felt like just dumping Clorox all over me right in the shower and just getting clean there's nothing like feeling clean, but man, is it bad if you feel dirty. And when we go through life and we pick up the sins of this world and we do some things that we regret. Am I talking to anybody that's got some regrets out there? You're like, oh man, I wish that night had never happened in the history of my life. 
We've all got some of those things. And I'm like, oh, and you walk away and you feel dirty. You, you like, I wish I could scrub my hands clean of that event and just be totally cleansed from it. And you feel worse than sewer water. You know what I'm talking about. I am so thankful today that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our sins can be forgiven. We can be clean. Everybody on the count of three, say clean. One, two, three. Clean. That's what we're talking about. That's a better way. Jesus wants you to be guilt-free and completely clean. I'm not a big Shakespeare fan. Uh, but I will say that in his classic work, the drama Macbeth, anybody familiar with that? It's all about guilt, really. Because this guy named Macbeth and his wife, Lady Macbeth, kill a dude named King Duncan. And they conspire together and they execute, they secretly kill King Duncan. And their plan went well until the fact that Lady Macbeth felt such guilt and remorse and shame and dirty about what they had done. She couldn't sleep at night. Anybody know what that's like, right? You, you couldn't sleep. She couldn't sleep. She was hallucinating in the drama. She was hallucinating and sleepwalking. And this is what he did. Macbeth says, I've got to help my wife get cleansed from this terrible thought that she keeps having, this guilt that she's having. And so this is a quote Macbeth says, and this is Shakespearean English, so this is going to be fun for me to read, these crazy old English words. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow. Raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse. There's that word cleanse, clean. Clean the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff. We've all got our stuff, which weighs upon the heart. And he asked the doctor there, hey, can't you give her some, some drug? He's, I, he brings his wife to the apothecary, the pharmacist, and says, she's got troubled stuff going on in her heart. She's sleepwalking. Some of you know exactly. You can't sleep at night. You feel dirty. And you numb away the pain with this substance or that substance. Or you get entertained and you just say, man, I've got to keep my mind off of it. And my heart breaks for you and the troubles and anxieties. The stuff. Man, you go through life, you feel the stuff, don't you? He said, can't you give her something for this? And the doctor replies and says, absolutely, I, I can't do anything for her. I don't have a drug that can help her with that. And today I want you to know that Jesus has an answer for that. Jesus has the sweet antidote, the only thing that can cleanse the troubles of your brain, the anxieties of your soul, and the sins of your past all in one, all in one awesome washing, all in one wonderful bathing when our soul becomes clean in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Can we praise our God today that he's ready to forgive you? He's ready. He wants you to be cleansed. I love our God today because he forgives us so faithfully. He forgives us immediately. If you come to God for cleansing from your junk in the past, he will forgive you immediately. He will not only forgive you immediately, he will forgive you completely. And Jesus is going to use those very words today. He says, I will forgive you. You can be completely clean. You don't have to hold on to a little stuff and think, oh, man, you know, I'm going to, I, I can't really be forgiven for that one. Or I should still beat myself up over that one. Or I should hold back on my life for God because I'm not worthy. You see, God forgives us immediately completely and also repeatedly and I'm grateful for this one how many of you are glad that God is the God of second chances how many of you are glad that though you've done the yeah you can praise God anytime you want 
How many of you are glad that God forgives us repeatedly? Even you say, man, I did this same thing three times. Can I come back to God? Even as a believer, you're sitting there and you say, I've been struggling with this besetting sin in my life and I need to get rid of it. This addiction, I, I just keep going back to the junk and I hate it, but I do and I don't know why I do. Can I get forgiveness? You better believe you can be forgiven over and over and over again. And in our heart today, that's why we gather here so we can receive God's cleansing be clean, and somehow God can change our mind and our thinking, and we can leave here today and have victory in our hearts and lives. That's why we're here. We're not here for a show, some warm, fuzzy vibe. That's great. But what we're here for is our soul to be clean, and God wants you to have that cleansing today. It's a better way, isn't it? You see, what happens, we start feeling guilt and shame, and God knows guilt is no good. Guilt is when we feel like we've done something wrong. Guilt, guilt is action-based. Is I did this and I, I, I'm, I'm guilty because I did something bad. Guilt is action-based. How many of you like to feel guilty, right? I've done this before, but since we have new people here, how many of you like to go on a, a road trip, right? Anybody like road trips? I love road trips, man. Sign me up for the next road trip. I'll go with you. How many of you like plane trips? Anybody go on a plane trip? You like to fly? I'm, I'm not so much flying anymore. I, I do, but I don't really. I like road trips, not much on plane trips. How many of you like a train trip? Have you ever done the, 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 the one up there by the Grand Canyon train trip? You like train trip? How many of you like guilt trips? Anybody like guilt trips, right? No, we don't like guilt trips, do we? Like, ugh. Guilt is no good. Shame is bad. So guilt is action-based. Shame is identity-based. Shame not only says, I did a bad thing, it says, I am a bad thing. Shame is used by Satan to weigh you down, to limit what God wants to do in your life, and to say you're not worthy. This is what shame does. Shame says, because of what you've done or experienced, you're not worthy. It says, you're unworthy. It even says in your soul, sometimes you get this lie that you are unwanted. So guilt is action-based. Shame, shame is identity-based. Guilt says, I did something bad. Check it out. Guilt believes I did something bad. We all know what that feels like. But shame is next level in the bad direction. It says, shame believes I am bad. And all this dirt that we accumulate in life and our experiences, the wrong things that we go through and the bad things that we do builds up into this nasty feeling that weighs us down, doesn't it? How many of you say, you know what, I'm Pastor Myron, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, we all do. God doesn't want you to feel that. There's a better way, and it's called clean. And today we're going to see, we're going to take three steps to dealing with your shame. And it's a better way, a much better way. And here's the big idea. Just let me go ahead and throw out the big idea for you today. The big idea. You can be completely clean from the stain of shame. You can be completely clean from the stain of shame. And today we're going to see in John chapter 13, as we continue our study in the book of John, we get to John chapter 13, and Jesus makes this statement. He uses that word completely, completely clean, and it's just popped off the pages of God's Word, and that's why we're talking about a better way is a clean way. John chapter 13 and verse number 1, let's check it out just to give you the context and set up the scene of this passage of Scripture. In John 13 verse 1, Jesus is in the upper room. It's the night before his crucifixion so this is the night of the lord's supper the last supper we call it and they do communion jesus they're celebrating the passover commemorating that event in the jewish history and the next day jesus will become the sacrificial lamb and take away the sin of the world and so they are there in the upper room and jesus does one other thing he washes the disciples feet and that sounds strange right in a lowly act of service, the king of the universe condescends down to fallen man, and he bows before dirty feet, 
and he washes their feet to symbolize cleansing. And it's going to be a way for us to understand being clean like never before. So that's the, that's the setting. Verse 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. By the way, we could preach a whole series right there on the love of Jesus Christ. He loves you to the end. He loves you all the way to the cross. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You might have done some stuff that leave you feel dirty, but Jesus will never leave you. He loves you faithfully to the end. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's why we're here today to remember that. As we go to verse 8, John 13, verse 8, we're catching up here. On the night before Jesus was crucified, Peter says to him, you shall never wash my feet. So the apostle Peter, he says, Jesus, I'm not, I see what you're doing here, but I, I'm not worthy. Don't wash my feet. And Jesus said to him, hey, uh, if you don't wash my feet, you don't have any part with me. You don't have any share with me if you don't let me wash your feet. And so classic apostle Peter, he goes all in. He's like, he's like, okay, God, I get it. Uh, I want to have part with you in your kingdom. I want to be on Jesus' team so bad. You can wash my whole body, right? <laughs> wash my hands, wash my head, wash my feet, he says. And then Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely, there's that phrase, just jumped out at me, maybe it will, is completely clean. God wants you to be completely clean. He wants you to have the shame gone once and for all. You can deal with the guilt, the shame. That dirty feeling that you have can be G-O-N-E, gone forever. And you are clean, he says, all you disciples, all you apostles. He was with his best friends in the upper room. All of you are clean except one, but not every one of you. And we know Judas was in the room. And Judas was not a true believer. Judas betrayed Jesus. He said, Judas, you're not clean. That's a terrible thing. You, do you know where uncleanness led Judas to? Judas was not clean. Do you know what that led him to? It was too much for him. He finally ended his life because there was uncleanness in him. There was so much dirt, so much shame. He didn't do the right thing with all that. And so he felt dirty and couldn't handle it. Jesus does not want you to live that way. There is a better way. Jesus wants you to be clean. And in this analogy that Jesus gives us, I can't wait to teach you this because it's going to be like a light bulb moment. What does he mean by bathed here? Like it says, Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed, does not need to wash except for his feet. What Jesus is saying here is that when a person takes a bath, he is completely clean. Let's just use a for instance here. Let's say tonight I, I, I take a bath shower, right? And then I, I, I go outside to let the dog out, and I walk through the grass, and I'm all clean from the shower, but I step in my neighbor's uh, dog come in my yard, and he... He, he left, he made a deposit in my yard, okay, I'll just say it a nice way, and I step in it. Do I need to go back in and take a whole bath? Some of you may say yes, right, and I get it. Hopefully it's not too bad, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to like get it off on the sidewalk or something. I'm going to go to the water hose, I'm going to wash my feet, because I've already had a bath. Jesus is saying here, once you have had your first bath spiritually, when you have been born into the family of God, you have, been, you have been made clean positionally with God. You have right standing with God. You are in the family of God. When you first believe, you get your first bath that's going to set you up for eternity. You are now clean. You may not be perfect, but when God looks down at you, he looks through Jesus and he sees a person that is clean. Because of your belief in him, you had a bath spiritually. And then he's going to say, but now when you walk through this world, your feet get dirty. 
When we walk through our daily lives, we pick up actions and behaviors, sins of the flesh, sins of the thoughts. And what we do, our, our lives pick up some dirt and they need cleansing. And he says, that's when you need your feet washed. You've already been positionally bathed and clean, but progressively as we walk through this life, we need a cleansing constantly, right? I remember when our kids were born, my sons, and how many of you remember this miraculous moment of, of life happening and you the you're in the birthing room. Anybody been in a birthing room, right? All of us have been in a birthing room, right? One way or another, right? You were born. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, maybe you were outside and you weren't technically in a room. That's cool, too, I guess. I, uh, I remember when uh, they brought our, my, my first son to me, especially, and, and all of, you know, all the, it's like uh, a big deal, right? They, here's your son, and, and the doctor, <laughs> I love, the doctor looked at me like, and I, he said, hey, do you want to cut the cord? And I thought, what? Like, uh, I, what are you talking about? I looked at him like he had two heads or something, like, like that, the, the umbilical cord. And he hands me a pair of hedge clippers. They look like hedge clippers. And I'm like, hey, do you want to cut the cord? I'm like, yeah, man, I, I've been dreaming about this moment my whole life. Yeah, I'm like, Julie, you okay with this? Because it's going to hurt, right? I didn't know. And uh she had an epidural, so I could pretty much do anything. And she hated my guts at that point anyway. So I'm like, yeah, sure. And I snapped it. And they're like, wow, that felt good. I want to do that again. So I did it three more times, right? In fact, me and Julie might have another one just so I can clip the cord again. That's fun. Man, kids are awesome. The miracle of birth is wonderful. But, you know, when they come out, they come out dirty. Like, not dirty, but just like slimy or something, right? And you're looking at that kid like, he, I mean, he's covered in cottage cheese or something. <laughs> like, what in the world is going on here? And they're like, hey, do you want to clip the cord? Yes. Do you want to hold the baby? Uh, yeah. Can you, ba can you just wipe him down first? Like, baby wipes, right? <laughs> so I remember the, the, those boys, they got cleaned up, and I held them. At birth, when they were born into the Scott family, they got their first bath, and they have been near and dear to me ever since. And when you become a believer, the initial moment when you have believed in Jesus, you were cleansed. Past, present, and future sins, all of them were atoned for because Jesus is your Savior and His blood covers and cleanses all of your sins. Are you glad for that today as believers? And I hope that if you've never received true, genuine cleansing, today would be the day where you're born into the family of God. And God says, you are now near and dear to me, and he holds you tight, and he'll never let you go. That's positional clean. But then there's this progressive cleansing that happens as we progress, as we grow, as we walk through this world making progress. We pick up the dirt and filth and sins that we commit need to be dealt with. We don't need a bath. We got that at the moment of salvation, but we need a cleansing. And Jesus says, you don't need to be washed completely again. You need to be cleansed. Just from the actions, the wrong things that you've done. You see, you're still God's child when you mess up. After you've been initially bathed and cleaned, forgiven, born into the family of God, if you sin, you're still his son, you're still his daughter. He just wants to have a moment where you stop and say, God, you're right, I need to, I need to move on from this. I'm sorry, please forgive me. My concern is today that so many believers go through life and they let the sins mount up. And it piles up so high, and you wonder why you are a little bit snappy at home, right? You wonder why you can be testy, and you can get loud and lose your temper. Maybe it's because you're carrying this guilt, and you feel bad about it. And God says there's a better way. He wants you to be clean from all that, so you don't have to feel convicted and icky and dirty. 
And like Lady Macbeth trying to get rid of all this stuff that you've done and it's mounting up and it feels so bad. God says you can be cleansed progressively. Don't let your sins pile up. Immediately when you do something wrong as a child of God, say, God, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. Please forgive me. And take that away. And you know what? You don't have to carry that anymore. It can be done over and done with. Anybody like the beach? Anybody, any weird people out there like the beach? I'm joking, right? Just playing. I don't like the beach. I'll give you uh, an alliterated list of reasons, because I alliterate everything, of why I don't like the beach. Because of the sand. And there's a lot of sand at the beach. I don't like the sand. I'll be honest with you. I like to be clean from the sand. So there's sand and then the salt. If I'm going to go swimming, just give me a mountain lake that I can jump into and not feel like the salt sticks with me and burns my eyes if I open my eyes, right? It's just me. I love, thank you, God, for the beach. It's awesome. I love the fish that comes from it, but I don't, I don't necessarily like to hang out on the beach because it's salt and sand, and then uh, it sticks, right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? We take a family of six to the beach, and we hang out and have a good time. And for six years later, we've got sand in our vehicle from that other time, right? And it never, it just builds up until we have to blow up our car, because nobody wants it after six years anyway. So I, I, the best part about the beach, though, is when you leave the beach, right? And, uh, and about, how many of you like the mountains? Anybody like the, I just love the mountains, man. That's my spot. It's my happy spot. And so you, the best part about the beach is when you leave and you go up to the parking lot, and, and there's, they, they put these little showers in there, the short ones, and you just push the button, and you, you get your feet clean. How many of you know what I'm talking about, right? Isn't that, like, ingenious? Because they know the, the beach, you're going to get dirty, and God knew that in life you were going to get dirty. And he says, listen, I've designed a way that after you have your initial bath, when you're born into the family of God, and then you walk through life and you're making progress, but your feet get dirty and you mess up, you think a bad thought, you do the wrong thing, then you can be forgiven and you can get a good old soul cleansing right on the spot. And that's what God wants for us as believers. This message is for everybody. Everybody in the room today can be clean, completely clean. You don't have to feel guilty. If you're a believer, you're progressing through life, and you do something wrong, get it right. Deal with it right there on the spot. And I'm going to give you three steps, three steps to shake the stain of shame. Three steps to shake the shame. Number one, confession. Number one is confession. I think confession is a lost art in 2022. You know what I think people do? And maybe I'm reading into things that I have no idea because I'm not the smartest dude in the world and I don't know everything. My wife tells me I know everything all the time. But No, I'm joking. I, I tell you what, I think people don't confess their sins. They stuff their sins away. I think it's a lost art, this thing called confession. And I'm not talking about where you have to go somewhere. I'm talking about when you get along with God and you confess your sins to God. It is therapeutic. It is helpful emotionally and most of all spiritually in your relationship with Jesus Christ to confess your sins to God. If you want to shake the shame, the first step is confession. 1 John 1, 9 is the classic verse on this topic. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. And let me just stop right there and preach for an hour on God's faithfulness. I could. How many of you are glad God is faithful in his forgiveness? Yes? I know a bunch of uh, dirty, rotten sinners out there like me. And you're like, oh, man, i got to come to God and ask him to forgive me of this again. And you're like, sometimes we're like, oh, I, I don't deserve to come to God and ask him to forgive me for that again. But I really need forgiveness. And we read this verse and we're like, God is faithful to forgive me even though I don't deserve it. Even though I've done it again and I hate it. God is there to forgive me. He is fast to forgive. He is the God of second third and fourth chances and a million chances, our God is faithful to forgive when we confess and say, God, I agree. The word confess is interesting. 
It comes from two words in the original, confess. It comes from these two words. One means to say. The other one means the same. This is really important. You're like, oh, I didn't know confession. I didn't even know what it was. I just thought it was something you do. Confess comes from two words. One means to say. The other one says the same. So when you confess your sins to God directly to him, you say the same thing about your nasty sin to God. You say, God, I gossiped about that person, and I know you say it's wrong. It's wrong. You know what? You can shorten it. God, gossip is bad, and I did it. Please forgive me. That would be good confession. And then you don't have to carry the shame. Instead of stuffing it, say it to God. It's therapeutic. It's like release. Bam! It is forgiven. And now, even though you're a child of God, that relationship is good again. My son Evan, Pearson, Cohen, and Weston, when they mess up, they don't stop being my son. They are still my sons. But what they need to do is come to dad and say, hey, dad, I'm sorry. And you know what? Our relationship is like completely restored again, and it's all good. That's what our Heavenly Father wants to do. You've already had your spiritual bath. If you're a believer, you're in the family. But as his child, our feet get dirty sometimes, and we slip up, we mess up, and we say the same thing. We say the same thing. God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And he's right there faithfully forgiving us. Confession is step number one. Another way to shake the shame, step two, is consumption consumption. You say, what do you mean consumption? I mean like if you were going to sit down at a dinner table and you were going to consume a 20-ounce T-bone steak with a loaded baked potato, a salad, a big buttery roll. Anybody getting hungry yet, right? And a big slab of chocolate cake and you consume it all. What if we consumed God's Word, Scripture? What if Step one, you confessed your sins, confession. And step two, you consumed scripture so much so that you were getting cleansed by the word of God. John chapter 17, verse 17, this is what Jesus said. His words, he's praying to his father. This is his great prayer in John 17, 17. He says, make them holy. He's praying for believers. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And when it says holy, that means completely clean, set apart from uncleanness. And God says one way, an important way for you to be cleansed, clean, is to get in the word of God and consume it. What if we had a big, uh, like a a chest up here, like like a treasure chest. And I had the treasure chest up here on stage. And we filled it with gold coins, right? <laughs> and I, I feel like talking like a pirate for some reason. We got this uh, big treasure chest, and it's filled with gold coins. And our matey, we got the treasure. I don't know, like I, that was probably terrible, but it, at least you're listening, okay? And we filled it full of coin, gold. There would be no room for trash in the treasure chest at that point, right? There's no room for trash when it's full of treasure and in our chest not a treasure chest but in our chest in our heart when we are filled up on consuming God's word there's no room for trash and that's why we gather weekly and we fill up on the word that's why your commitment to being here is important that's why we go to small group that's why we encourage you download the you version of the app of the bible the you version of the bible that app on your phone So you can constantly be streaming God's word in. Fill up your soul with good stuff to keep the bad stuff out and you'll be clean. Jesus prayed that for you. So you have confession, step one. Say the same as God. God, that thought was wrong. Please forgive me. Boom. You don't have to carry it anymore. Consumption. Confession, consumption, and then The last step is communication with others. Check this out. James chapter 5. Some of you don't even know this is in the Bible, but it's great, and it brings healing, Jesus says. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. (laughs) You're like, what? 
I got to confess my sins to other people. It helps. Look what it says. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be, what is that? Read the next word. Read the next word. That you may be, say it again, that you may be, do you want to be healed of your shame? Do you want to be healed of the heartaches and the nasty stuff that you've been holding, the guilt? Get in a small group. Come to church on Sunday. Pray with people about it. Here, here's the deal. Here's what happens. When you do something in the dark, healing cannot happen in the dark. When you hide it and you're like, oh, I, I'm not going to tell... I'm not going to tell you about it, but when you have a brother or sister in Jesus, someone in your church family that you feel like you could confide in, and you, and you go from the dark, and you bring it to the light, and you're like, oh, it feels so much better to get this off of me. i got to tell you about it. It's kind of like when you, you get, order a pizza, and the whole pizza's there, and you're like, I could eat the whole thing every slice. But if I eat it all myself, I'm going to feel sick. Some reason it just helps to serve up a slice of our life to people in our church and say, hey, I need to tell you, I need to talk to somebody about this. Because when you keep it in the dark, it weighs on you. You feel unworthy. You feel unwanted and the shame weighs you down. But when you bring it to the light and you have someone to talk to about it, healing, the Bible says, you may be healed. And I'm talking to some people that need some healing today. And I want us all to think about this awesome idea that Jesus gives us today. It's the big idea. You can be completely clean from the stain of shame. You can be completely clean from the stain of shame. And I really could tell you no greater thing in all the world than that big idea because Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood so those stains could be forgiven and you could be made right with God. Now here's the deal. I want to talk first of all to you as believers, my brothers, my sisters. I want to tell you something right now. If you don't feel completely clean in Christ as a believer, you don't have to get the bath. You already did that when you first believed. But right now, maybe you, need to, maybe you need to do a little foot washing thing in your soul. You know what I'm saying? You've been listening. And right now, you need to say the same thing to God. God, I confess. I'm going to get that taken care of because it's weighing on you. You don't have to let it weigh you down. Right now in this moment, would you, all believers, all believers right now, I'm asking you, maybe if you feel led along with me to hold your hands like this up to God, and would you pray a prayer with me? I just want to help you verbalize some stuff to God today. It's therapeutic spiritually. It'll get you right into the presence of God. That's what we crave. Would you hold your hands up, believers, with me if you feel like it? Would you pray now and you just say something like this? You, can, you don't have to let me help you. You know what to do. Would you just whisper that prayer to God? Something like this, God, please forgive me again. Thank you, God, for Jesus. His shed blood, his death on the cross. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. God, thank you that you're faithful to forgive. How about this one? Just say, God, I want to be completely clean. Father, today as believers, as your children, we get close to you. This is why we're here, to find forgiveness, cleansing. It's a better way, and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, doesn't that feel so much better? Isn't that the right way? Isn't that what God has been calling you to? Clean. There's nothing like it in all the world. The next thing is this. You know, I, I know in a room like this, a crowd this size, there's people like at the first service that 
maybe you've never for sure nailed it down that you are a real deal believer and and maybe maybe today you're not sure if you've ever had that initial the bath that we talked about where you were born into God's family you can have that right now we're not trying to hold it back like oh you got to jump through these hoops and do these seven week classes or something like that no 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 if God is tugging at your heart in this moment right now if you've never had that initial bathing where you are clean and made whole and born into the family of God would you pray right now would you pray and I'll help you you say man I don't know what to say I can help you and what I love to do is say a phrase and then you repeat it straight to God and if you're ready to turn from the sin it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect man but God's going to give you a new heart to do right and you're saying I'm turning from my sin to the Savior, to be born into the family of God. This day could change your life for all eternity. I'm asking you right now, would you commit your life to Jesus Christ and be clean? You can pray this prayer. I'll say a phrase. You can shout it. You can speak it out loud if you want. You can say it silently. It doesn't really matter. God will hear. Would you pray? Say this. Here it is. Here it is. Dear God, you can repeat it, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I turn from my sin, and I turn to you, I believe Jesus died and rose again, I give my life to you, thank you so much for making me clean. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All across this room and online, if you just prayed that prayer, there's nothing better in all the universe than what just happened. And I want to tell you, they're throwing a party in heaven. The Bible says so. They're excited and all jazzed up when people come to Christ. And here's the deal. If you just said yes to Jesus, you need to tell somebody. You need to be, you need to be bold about it. And I know that if you just said yes to Jesus... You had your sins forgiven. You're not. You're gonna be like, wow, God just forgave me for everything. I don't have to feel shame. I am excited for it. And if you just said yes to Jesus, you prayed that prayer. Would you hold your hand up along with mine? Hands up all across. Lift them up and hold them up. Can we hold them up? Yes. We love you. We praise God for what He's doing in your life. We are for you today. We want to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. And this is one thing, it's so important that you do this so we can help you. You take that I said yes to Jesus card out. It's in the seat pocket. Would you grab that card, look in the seat pocket right there? We're going to take a moment because it's important. You made the decision of your life. Man, this is awesome. You're in the family of God. Take that I said yes to Jesus card out and go ahead and put your name on there. Whatever contact information you feel like sharing. And then check off the box that says I said yes to Jesus. It's actually a circle. And then there's another one that says, I'm interested in baptism. Check that one off. And here's the deal. Get this, people. If you came today and you just said yes to Jesus, today you can actually get baptized even though you didn't plan on it. You can join these others that are here to be baptized. And we've, we've been so excited to see people show up at Compassion Church. And when they get baptized, it's like extra special because they didn't even show up thinking they were. But God did something real in their heart. And they're like, if he can bring me into his family, then I can step out. And man, I want to get baptized. I want to do what God has for me to do. And if you feel like taking this spiritual step, check that. And then in a moment, when we dismiss the others who are getting baptized today, you'll join them in the lobby. And we've got everything you need. You're, th- you're thinking, well, how am I going to dry off? Well, for one, it's Arizona. You dry in 30 seconds. All right? Just stand out there. You're good. But we've got a towel. We've got a change of clothes for you. We've got shirts. We've got shorts. We've got everything that you can think of that you need to walk out of here dry and I mean everything that's the great thing about church we're providing for you and you can come and be baptized today here's the deal it's a spiritual step so if you have said yes to Jesus maybe you just did it or maybe you've done it in the past but you haven't been baptized but God's tugging at your heart do the right thing you you will not regret it I'll say this I've never seen somebody 
like get up out of the baptism and say, oh, wish I hadn't done that today. <laughs> Never. Now, I've seen some fist pumping action going on. I've seen some praise Jesus stuff going on. I've seen some excitement and a whole lot of smiles, but I've never seen a frown. So if you've never yet been baptized as a believer, maybe as a kid, your parents meant well and they got you whatever, but you're like, for me now in this moment, I need to do it for myself, for Jesus, and I know I've done, I've done a work with God. God's done a work in me, and I'm ready to do this volitionally, make my decision public for all to see, then right now, I'm going to ask everyone that's going to get baptized today, you planned on it, would you stand, will you just head to the lobby, will you just go ahead and make your way back, let's praise God for all of these, give it up big, and everybody in the building, maybe you didn't plan on it, this is your time, will you join them in the lobby as we start to worship, we're going to praise big as we worship our God, and we continue with this baptism opportunity, go ahead and leave. Go out to the back. If you're ready to get baptized, we can baptize you today. You can take this step. God bless you. It's going to be awesome. Hey, thank you so much for being here on Baptism Sunday. Baptism is such an awesome step for believers as they publicly declare their belief in Jesus. So would you all stand up with me right now as these people come back in and as our brothers and sisters are baptized, can we make sure to just cheer really loud as they come up out of that water? We want to encourage them as they walk forward in their faith. Uh, let's worship now as they bring them in. I saw sin fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Yes I do Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh my prayer testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony sons and daughters bought with blood and washed in water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our god will finish what he started yes our god will finish what he started this is my testimony from dead to Grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
Jesus Christ rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Now I'm alive. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Glory. 
buses. So if you guys can just hang out for just a second, we're gonna let everybody get back and get the kids back. So that way, parents, you can go and pick them up. But thank you so much. Hasn't it been a great day here at Compassion Church?